The other day I made a video showing how to take text and rotate it around an image, but today I thought we'd try to level up our game and get that text to rotate completely around the circumference of an object. Kind of a cool 3D effect, let's jump into it. Let's start with a blank project. What I'm gonna do is go up to the media pool, right click, and I'm gonna create a new fusion composition. Let's name that rotate text. And then let's just drag that down into our timeline. I'm gonna stretch this out to be a little longer. I like trying to stretch out the fusion composition in advance because it allows me to get all of that animation included in the composition and I don't have to tweak it later on if I need it to be longer. So let's right click on that and open it up in the fusion page. Now it's an empty fusion composition. So all you're seeing is that media out node. We haven't built anything yet. And the way we're gonna start is with text. Let's just grab a standard text node and let's just drag it down into our graph node area. Now I'm not seeing anything up in the preview window because I haven't assigned that text node to be viewed up there. I'm gonna hit two on my keyboard and it'll put it up in the preview window. I've got this set for single viewer mode. You might see two screens. It might look like it's off to the right. This option up here is gonna to toggle between the dual and single viewer mode. I personally like working with a single viewer most of the time when I'm doing a simple effect like this. Let's see if it really is simple. So with the text node selected and up in the preview window, let's go up to the inspector and let's type some text in. How about rotate text around an object? So now we have text and you can do all the usual things you would do with the text node, like go up and change the font. We could change this to impact. You could increase the size if you wanted to. All of the usual things that we've done with text nodes everywhere in the edit page and in Fusion. You can even go up to the shading tab, click on number three, that's the black shadow option. I'm gonna enable that. See how it drops that little black drop shadow behind it. I'm gonna dial back the opacity, it's a little bit strong. I like it around maybe 50% or so. And now we have text, but it's just straight text. We want this to be curved text. Now to do that, we need to take our two dimensional text and bring it into a 3D space. And the way to do that is with our text node still selected, we're gonna go up over here to the tray of 3D tools and we're gonna click on shape 3D. When we click on that, it automatically adds that node right after our text node, but we still have the text node up in the preview window, even though we have the shape 3D node selected. This is one of those things you have to get used to in Fusion. The preview window is only gonna ever show you whichever node you you've assigned to the preview window. And it allows you to jump through different elements of your fusion composition to view the individual components in a way that you can tweak them. So in this case, if I wanna see that text in the 3D space, I would select that shape 3D node and I would hit two again on my keyboard. And now we're looking at that text in a 3D space. Now it's still very flat. We wanna change the shape to make it more like a circle. So in the controls tab, that's the default tab you should be in. Look right here, it says shape. Let's change it from plane to cylinder. And you see how it immediately gets that curve that we're looking for? Really quick, very simple. This technique isn't too tricky. It just needs a little finesse. Now, one of the problems I see immediately, let me move this up, is that the text has a big space between where it begins and where it ends. I need to stretch that out so that the letters kind of connect. I don't want a big space. I want it to feel like a continuous circle. So what I'm gonna do is go back and select the text node. I'm still looking at the shape 3D node. That's assigned to the preview window, but I've selected the text node so that the inspector is enabled for that text node. And I'm gonna go back to the text tab and see right here where it says size. I'm gonna left click and hold and drag that to the right. And you see how it starts stretching that text out and bringing it close together. Now the beginning and the end are getting much closer to touching. Now using this slider can be a little clunky. It moves very harsh. If you want to really fine tune the motion, the way to do that is hit shift on your keyboard and then left click and hold right in the numerical box right here, that value box, and do the same motion, either pull right or pull left, and it'll do it much more slowly and incrementally and you can really tweak that and get it just where you want. I'm basically trying to get this space here to be the same as that space there, and that should be close enough. I can always tweak it a little more later. So now I have my text and it's in a 3D circle and it looks like the spacing is right. But down in my node graph, if I tried to grab that and connect it to the media out, it won't let me connect it. And the reason is, is I've brought my 2D text into a 3D space, but I need to be able to transform that 3D space back into a 2D space and get it into my project and timeline. So now with the shape 3D text selected, what I'm gonna do is go up and I'm gonna select render 3D. 
click on that. And if I have that selected and hit two on my keyboard, now you can see it's put it in a 2D space. But you can see it's still very flat. We wanna give it a little bit of rotation. So what we're gonna do is start off by connecting it into the media out. That's our total output. And you can even select the media out node and hit two and it'll look very much the same. It just shows us that we've now been able to bring it from a 3D space to a 2D space and our node tree is complete. But with the final media out node up in the preview window, let's go back and select shape three. 3D. Now up in the upper right inspector, click over to the transform tab, and that's going to allow us to tweak that text, that cylindrical text, twist it, turn it, spin it, do a lot of things that we want to do to make it look like it's spinning around an object. Now at the top, you'll see there is options for translation. Translation, the X value is going to move it left and right. I'm just left clicking, holding on that wheel. The Y value is going to move it up and down, but because it's 3D, do you see how it kind of leans in perspective? And then the Z value is gonna make it bigger or smaller. It's gonna move it in or out. I personally want this to be a little smaller to start with, so I'm gonna pull the Z value back. Now down on the rotation, you'll see that the X allows to also sort of dip it forward and back. The Y value starts to rotate it, and the Z value starts to go sort of left and right. So I'm gonna start with the X and I'm gonna lean it forward. What I'm looking for is I'm trying to create space between the tops of these letters and the ones in the back, because I'm gonna to have to mask them out later on, but if they're overlapping a lot, it makes that masking process really difficult. So just make sure you rotate it enough so that these letters aren't gonna be on top of the ones behind them. Now I also wanna get this text to rotate, to start going around in a circle. And as I showed you, the Y value rotates that. And if I start moving left and right, you'll see that rotate but because I've tilted it, it's actually thrown off that rotation. It's sort of off axis. An easy way to fix that, instead of the X, Y, Z value, let's go to the end and click on the Z, Y, X. Now when I grab that Y value and I spin it, because it's put the Y value ahead of the X, it's going to allow me to spin it without twisting or tweaking it. That's what all those different options do is just tell you which order the X, the Y, or the Z should be affected first and which one should come after it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my playhead, make sure it's all the way back at the beginning, and I'm gonna start with the word rotate, sort of front and center. And I'm gonna put a keyframe right there. Make sure you have that playhead all the way back at the beginning, that's really important. Now I'm gonna pull the playhead all the way to the end, left click, hold, and drag. I'm gonna go back up to that rotation Y angle, and I'm actually gonna left click and hold and pull it to the left. And the reason I'm gonna pull it to the left is that's the way that you would normally read English. If I pull it to the left, you'll see how the word starts spinning in a way where it keeps bringing the word to the right up next and you can read them in order. And all I'm gonna do is spin it a few times around, maybe twice, and so you can see it's added a keyframe right at the very end where I've moved that playhead to. And if I go back to the beginning, you can see the speed at which it's moving. If you wanted that speed to be slower, just click up here to go to the very end keyframe and left click and hold the Y wheel and pull it to the right so it's got fewer rotations. That's gonna slow down the rotation. And if you wanted it to go faster, go back to the final end keyframe again. Make sure you go there. We don't wanna add new keyframes in the middle. Left click and hold and pull it to the left. That's gonna speed up our rotation. I want this to be a little slower, so I'm gonna go back to the final keyframe, left click, hold, pull to the right, and see if I can get a slightly slower rotation. Something like that looks pretty good. That way I can actually read the words as they come around. Now I wanna add in a piece of footage of the planet Earth also spinning. And I've got one right up here. I'm gonna bring that down into my timeline hit two and you can now see this piece of footage of the planet Earth rotating. Now I got this piece of footage from today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an online asset house where you can get things like high quality video assets or images, music, sound effects, templates that you can use right inside of DaVinci Resolve, overlays and more. Now I've been using Storyblocks long before they were ever a sponsor. I've been paying for them for years because I find what they provide very valuable for video editors like me. I like them because they have one particular predictable price that allows you to download as many things from their website as you need for your projects. There are no limits whatsoever. And all of the things that Storyblocks offers are made by real creators. It's not that AI generated stuff that seems to be taking over the planet. And Storyblocks allows me to find the kinds of things that I can use in my project that would be really hard for me to create on my own. If you're interested in checking out Storyblocks, I'll leave this link down below where you can go check them out today. So thank you Storyblocks for this awesome spinning earth video. I'm gonna take this 
and I'm going to connect this right after all of my text, but before my media out. And as we've talked about before, the easiest way to do that is grab the output of that node and connect it to the output of your other node. And it'll immediately create a merge node that brings the text and the planet Earth footage together. But there's a problem here. Can you see it? I don't see the text. And the reason is whenever you merge like that, these merge nodes have different merge points. And if I hover on this green spot, that little upside down triangle, you can see it says foreground. And if I hover on the yellow one, it says background. So it's got that planet Earth footage in the foreground and the text behind it. We want that the other way around. We want the text in the foreground. So a really simple way to fix that is just left click hold and disconnect those and change the output of the text to go to the green one. Now it looks like it didn't move anything because you would expect that now to be attached to the top, but it physically moves those little input points. You can now see that the one on the side is green foreground and the one that's left on top is now background. So all I have to do is grab the output of the planet footage, put it into that yellow input of the merge node, make sure that I have the media output selected, hit two on your keyboard. And now you'll see that my text is in front of my planet. But now we have to do a bit of tweaking. The text is too big. So let's keep the media out selected in the preview window because we want to see the final composition of what it's going to look like. But let's go back and select the shape 3D node because that's the one we use to change the shape, location, rotation of the text. And we want to change the size of it. And if you remember that was under translation, the Z option allowed us to shrink that down. So I'm just going to pull that down to a place where I go, nah, that's kind of good. I want it slightly larger than the planet. I want like maybe an inch or so outside of the edge of the planet but it's also a little low, so we need to raise that up a bit. So I'm gonna grab the Y value and just lift it slightly so it's a little more around the center. And then if I bring my playhead all the way back to the beginning, you'll see I've got the text rotating and the planet is rotating, all very cool, except I want the back part of that text to be behind the planet. So what we're gonna need to do is mask that out. And the way to do that is go right to the merge node, select it, and let's go up here and let's select a polygon mask. Left click and it'll add it right onto that. Let me pull that out of the way so you can see it here. But when I added that polygon mask, it seemed to make my text disappear completely. What we need to do is with the polygon node selected, go to the upper right inspector and click on invert. So we swap the mask to make sure it's not masking anything yet. And we can see our text again. Now here's where we want to zoom in a bit. Now I've got a Logic Tech mouse that has a center wheel and all I need to do is hit control and I can use my wheel to zoom in. But if you don't have a mouse wheel like that, in the upper left you can see you can change the zoom options so that you can get more zoomed in on your preview window. But what I want to do is I'm going to move this down. I need to mask right along the edge of this planet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start above my text and I'm going to start left clicking and creating this mask that hopefully follows the edge of the planet. Now I know the text is in the way, but don't worry if you don't get all these points exactly right, you can adjust them afterwards. I'm gonna go down past enough that I don't go into the text below it. I don't wanna hit any of the capital letters here. Just get below the text in the shadow, and then I'm gonna start moving across the middle. And then I'm gonna to come to this side and do the same thing, work my way up, click on the edge of the planet. I'm doing a little bit of guessing where that edge is. I wanna make sure I get above like the capital T's and things like that. So let's get up here, come back across, put a little angle on that. And when you finish your mask, make sure this is super important. You have to click right back on the very first point you started at. And you'll know when you're there because your mouse will go from like a plus button to like a little circle, click there, and then everything will disappear. You need to complete that entire mask and close it in a loop. And now that I've done that, you've seen I've masked out that text where it goes behind the planet. Now, like I said, we can still zoom in and we can do some corrections in here. They're not too bad, but you can see this one right here is a little inside that planet line. I can left click and hold, bring it right out to the edge of the planet. Any one of these I can slightly adjust. And you can even grab the little handles on each and give them a little curve if you want to. Just go back and try to get these as good as you can get them right on the edge of the planet. And if you need to add another point, just left click. It'll add another mask point that you can operate and manipulate. Now you'll see I've got all of that masked out. And when I go back to the edit page, I've got this really awesome text that's gonna rotate around the planet Earth while that Earth globe is spinning as well. Not too tricky, pretty cool. You can take this to new levels and actually track it and put it around things that are moving. But start here and see if you can figure this out. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me down in the comments section below. And if you wanna learn more about how to edit video with DaVinci Resolve, click on the videos that I've got on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.